It's genocide, openly declared and carried out by the apartheid state of Israel. The Irish position is somewhat of an outlier uh, amongst European nations. Ireland has been quite vocal about calling for an end to what's going on on the ground. Would you accept the accusation by the Irish government that that seems to have been really driven by revenge? There is a lot of criticism from Irish politicians of the Israeli offensive in Gaza and the overall position of the Israelis when it comes to the West Bank. So the media tends to reflect that. The debate around Palestine in Ireland is unlike almost anywhere else in Europe. You can hear it in the language used by Prime Minister Leo Varadkar. But I've huge sympathy for the Palestinian people. Um, they've been horribly treated now for 75 years and denied. It's evident in the positions held across the political spectrum. When does Palestine get the right to defend itself? In the voices you hear on the streets, and it's echoed in the Irish media their approach to the story and the questions they're asking. If you are killing people who are of a particular nationality or of a particular ethnicity, that is the very legal definition of genocide. Absolutely not. It is. We are not the coverage of Israel and the um, mechanizations of the Israeli government have been quite impartial. I've written opinion pieces that have called for a ceasefire straight away and for the carnage to stop. That's controversial in other jurisdictions, but I feel like this is a normal, logical thing to call for. I wouldn't say necessarily say anything's radical about it. The position is Irish people have compassion for what is happening in Gaza when they see dead children, dead doctors, dead nurses, dead civilians. There's no position in Ireland that is critical of Israel's right to defend itself or Israel's right to exist or anything like that. There is the same amount of compassion for those who are the victims of Hamas's savage attack. It's just that I think the feeling in Ireland is that the innocent civilians in Gaza shouldn't pay the price for what Hamas has done. Ireland's affinity with Palestine is shaped by the country's colonial past and a shared history of resistance to British rule. Ireland was Britain's oldest colony. The tools of control Britain used there, suppression, violence and division, informed British colonial rule elsewhere in the world, including in Palestine. And then there is Ireland's more recent history, the civil conflict in Northern Ireland known as the Troubles, and the difficult sacrifices Ireland has made in the pursuit of peace, which some suggest offers a template to Palestinians and Israelis. Miracles are hard to believe in, but it's worth remembering that we are currently living our own miracle on this island. And for all those in Israel and Palestine tonight, it mightn't seem like it, but there's always hope, and we hope that your miracle comes soon. Ireland has fought British colonialism, has experienced imperialism. We have our, our legacy of experiencing ethnic cleansing, forcible transfer, genocide through hunger and starvation. So Ireland has a natural affiliation when it comes to standing in solidarity with other colonised people. Of course, there are uh, those on the island of Ireland who would find affinity with uh, the Israeli state, but in many ways it is the, the stance of the Irish people is in standing strong in favour of, of Palestine and Palestinian liberation. Beyond the shared history of oppression, what explains the Irish position is a grasp of reality. I think our military uh, neutrality has a lot to do with that. When you see a piece of land and its people being bombarded by an extraordinarily well-resourced military. The call for peace is a, pr is a pretty obvious one. Our foreign policy has been very consistent for decades, and not just on the issue of the two-state solution for Palestine, but our adherence to multilateralism. Ireland uh, has, a, has had its own peace process, and to do that, we had to uh, get our diaspora on board. We had to have international friends to help us along the way. And I think the feeling in Ireland is the Palestinians don't have any friends. The Irish are seen as advocates for Palestinian rights in a continent that has mostly stood shoulder to shoulder with Israel. However, Ireland's conservative government has faced criticism from the opposition for not going far enough. That the recitation of all of our interventions and charitable acts for the Palestinian people 
do not relieve you as a government of your primary responsibility to hold Israel accountable to the world for its actions. The government has been vocal, but its actions have been limited. It has not recalled its ambassador to Israel or cut diplomatic ties like a number of countries across the global south. Ireland may stand out in Europe, but the discourse in its politics and its media shows that its stance is hardly radical. The discourse and the language that is used at a European level is echoed by the Irish government and that in and of itself will find itself into the mainstream media. So we are viewed in Europe as being somewhat of an outlier, but that's still a relatively conservative position. We may say one or two words differently to our European counterparts, but that isn't a huge difference. Ireland was very much behind, you know, the most the, the language around condemning Hamas, um, releasing the hostages, Israel's right to defend itself, but wanted to ensure that amongst all of that was this, the Palestinian civilians, that they would have their rights observed under international humanitarian law. It can use its small voice to ensure that the Palestinians are not forgotten, the civilians in Palestine, in Gaza, are not forgotten.